Dzień za dniem, noc za nocą. Nasze życie upływa pod bezkresnym niebem. Marzymy o rzeczach wielkich, ale życzymy sobie rzeczy prostych. Myślami wybiegamy do przodu, ale jesteśmy świadomi, że życie toczy się tu i teraz. Spoglądamy w niebo z dobrego miejsca na ziemi. Kujawsko-Pomorska Eszkoła. Witamy po długim weekendzie. Na pewno wielu z Was będzie ciężko się odnaleźć w nowej rzeczywistości po weekendowej, ale miejmy nadzieję, że razem z nami jako tako przejdziemy ten poniedziałek obronną ręką. Myślę, że lekcja, która będzie preludium dzisiejszych spotkań z nami, da Wam trochę więcej energii. Będzie o czymś bardzo przyjemnym. Ale do konkretów. Jest już z nami pan Maciej Doksa, to oznacza lekcję języka angielskiego dla uczniów klasy pierwszej liceum ogólnokształcącego po gimnazjum. Tematem będą zakupy, shopping. Panie Macieju, czy coś więcej warto jeszcze dodać? Yes, of course, there's a lot of things we can talk about when it comes to shopping. So good morning everybody. Today, uh, as you have just heard, we are going to talk about shopping, something that uh, most of us love, some people hate it, but uh, nevertheless, it is an important thing for everybody. Okay, so um, the title of our lesson is shopping, shop till you drop. Shop till you drop is a popular English expression. It means that you do shopping until you can do it no more, until you're so tired that you are just literally uh, falling down on your face. So shop till you drop means robić zakupy do upadłego. Uh, all right, so when it comes to shopping, uh, first of all, it's good to talk about the different types of shops uh, that we can do shopping in. Uh, so let's take a look at this uh, slide. So the first one is corner shop. Corner shop is a small local shop uh, usually run by a private owner or a family. Uh, we call such owner a shopkeeper. These shops tend to be small. They are usually in the neighborhood. Very often they are uh, open uh, long hours. We call them corner shop. Uh, because they used to be uh, in the corner of the street. Uh, nowadays, not necessarily so, but still we call them corner shop, which in Polish would be sklepik osiedlowy, sklepik um, lokalny, and so on and so on. So unfortunately, this is the type of shop that is uh, slowly uh, disappearing. Uh, it is being uh, replaced by other types of shops. The next one is a convenience store. What is a convenience store? Convenience store is um, also a little bit similar to the corner shop. It tends to be small. It's usually not very far away from uh, any place you are at. It's a local shop. Uh, it is uh, called convenience store, czyli wygodny sklep. Why? Because it is usually called long hours. Um, uh, sorry, it is open long hours. Uh, very often it can be open at night, so it's like 24-7. Uh, it tends to be small, but it's usually bigger than a corner shop. It's uh, like a very often self-service shop, so you just take your goods and then go to the cash register. Um, so uh, this is what convenience store is. The next one is grocers. Well, grocers is generally any type of uh, shop that sells food. Uh, groceries are food products, so grocers uh, would be any shop uh, that specializes in selling food. The next one is something that is obvious, we all know them. It's supermarket or hypermarket. Of course, hypermarkets are uh, the biggest ones, the 
the giants of uh, the retail trade. Um, so these are self-service shops in which uh, you do your shopping on your own. Uh, you just pay at the um, uh, checkout uh, and that's it. Uh, they offer a very wide range of products. You can virtually buy their everything. The next one is a very popular type of uh, place. It's not a single shop. It's a, a basically group of shops under one uh, roof uh, located in one huge building. We call it in Europe, we call it shopping center. Uh, in America, they are called shopping malls or just malls, uh, which in Poland is uh, called Galeria Handlowa. Uh, I just have to remind you that uh, in English what we call Galeria Handlova in English is not called a gallery. Some students uh, make this very uh, quick simple association Galeria Handlova in English. Well, it's a gallery. Of course not. Gallery is an art gallery in English, so a place where you can uh, see some works of art. Uh, what we call Galeria in English is always called shopping center or the mall. Next one is a very, very popular type of shop. Uh, they are appearing uh, almost everywhere. They're really, really uh, making a uh, huge uh, success on the retail market. They are discount stores, sometimes also called discounters. Uh, of course, it's easy to guess what it is because the Polish name is very, very similar. Uh, Disconte. So these are shops which uh, offer usually uh, groceries, so food products, plus additionally some other things like cosmetics uh, or some other gadgets which they have as in, you know as extra products, but basically. Mm, they offer groceries, so they are grocery stores. Um, they are called discount stores or discounters because the products there are uh, usually, not always, but usually cheaper than in the traditional shops. Uh, yes, so they are popular. They are much smaller, usually much smaller than supermarkets or hypermarkets. Uh, and the last type of uh, shop is a very uh, special kind of shop, general store. This is a shop that, well, it's an American name basically. So it's a shop uh, in a rural area, so in the countryside, where uh, there aren't really many other shops. So this is a usually not very big shop which offers basically everything. So uh, they will offer uh, groceries, but also uh, cosmetics, but also some things for running the farm, uh, for running the household. So they can offer a wide uh, range of products. However, uh, this range uh, at the same time can be quite limited. Uh, in Polish, um, that would be sklep wielobranżowy. So uh, this is something that is all, also disappearing in Poland, but we have them still in some places uh, where you don't have the big supermarkets or discount stores, so you have the smaller general stores. All right, uh, just one more thing. Uh, let me remind you, of course, here is a mistake. I have to correct it. We can't uh, leave it like that. Yes, so shops. Um, in uh, British English, we use, usually say a shop. In American English, they tend to call shop a store. So it's also worth to uh, it's worth reminding you. Okay, now there are of course shops which sell specialist products. It has very narrow. Uh, range of products of one type. So let's take a look at them. Bakers <clears throat> or bakery. You know this is a place which um, sells baked goods like bread, rolls, cakes, uh, and so on and so on. There are two names, uh, both uh, mean the same. You can say bakery or bakers. Uh, <clears throat> 
The next one is confectionery store. Confectionery store is basically a store which sells sweets. It can, they can sell cakes, cookies, sweets, all kind of sweet things <clears throat> that we eat. So this is uh, what we call in Polish cukiernia. Next one, candy shop or candy store. This is uh, similar to the confectionery store. Well, confectionery store offers uh, all kinds of sweets, including cakes, uh, cookies, cakes, and so on and so on. Candy shop or candy store tends to mm, sell only sweets or candy. In American English, sweets are very often called candy. Uh, the next one is green grocers. As you can uh, imagine, uh, green grocers is a product is a shop that sells uh, green products, meaning fruit and vegetables. Uh, shoe shop, that's obvious. It's a place which uh, sells shoes. Bookshop, I think it's also quite obvious. Uh, hardware store or metalware store. This is a shop which usually sells uh, tools, uh, things uh, made of metal, used for building, renovation, DIY jobs. This kind of shop, uh, as a specialist shop, is also disappearing. Uh, nowadays, these shops are usually replaced by huge building supermarkets where you can buy everything uh, that you need to build a house, to renovate a house, to improve your house. So perhaps we should add one more name to this. So let me just put this on the board. Uh, so uh, this is what we call DIY store. Uh, what is a DIY store? DIY in English means do it yourself, which means uh, things that you do at home to improve your home or house or flat, uh, meaning you renovate it, you uh, modernize it, you repair stuff in your home. So these are things that you do yourself. So they are called DIY stores in Polish, markety budowlane. So DIY stores have now uh, mostly replaced hardware or metalware stores uh, <clears throat> because they sell also other things, not only metal uh, things. All right, uh, there are other types of stores too. Uh, the first one on this slide is off-license or liquor store. There are two names because one of them is British English, the other one is American English in Great Britain. Basically, they say off-license and this is a shop which sells alcohol products or alcohol beverages. Uh, the name is a little bit strange in my opinion, honestly. Why? Well, because off-license would suggest that it's off-license, so you don't need a li license, like without a license. The truth is that, in fact, these shops uh, almost always need a license. The owners need a license to sell alcohol, just like in Poland. Uh, in America, it's called liquor store. Why liquor store? Because liquor in English means alcoholic drinks, the strong ones, stronger than beer or um, wines. So this is liquor store. The next one is also a type of shop which has uh, more than one name. Pharmacy, chemists or drugstore. All these things means, mean a place where you can buy medicines or drugs because you have to remember that drugs in English mean the word drugs doesn't only mean narcotics it also means medicines. Uh, in America they usually say drugstore. In uh, Great Britain they say chemist or pharmacy. Pharmacy is more universal you can use it all, almost everywhere. Uh, so this is um, what we call apteka, but uh, in um, England, in America, this is uh, also usually a place which uh, sells uh, cosmetics apart from uh, medicines. In Poland, you also have such um, uh, shop chains, uh, pharmacy chains, which sell both medicines and um, cosmetics. 
The next one is butchers. Butchers is a place which sells meat or meat products. So in Polish that would be rzeźnik or uh, sklep mięsny. Uh, they are also kind of disappearing now. Very often they are part of uh, supermarkets. Florists. Uh, florists, uh, the Polish name of the person who works there, floristka. So uh, florist means uh, a flower shop, so place which sells flowers, czyli kwiaciarnia. Fishmongers. Fishmongers is a place which sells fish, and that's it, as the name suggests, czyli sklep rybny. Pet shop is a place which sells pets, so animals we keep at home, but also it sells pet food and all the equipment or accessories that you need to keep healthy pets uh, at home and to keep them happy. And the last one, gift shop, uh, the name tells it all. Uh, it is uh, a place where you can buy presents, gifts for other people. So they offer a wide range of different gadgets or gimmicks and, you know, bits and pieces, things like that. When you look at the names of the shops in English, you may wonder why in a lot of names of shops at the end of the word, like here, for example, florists, fishmongers, butchers, chemists, why there is an apostrophe and letter S at the end? Well, <clears throat> this happens when the name of the shop is created from the name of the person or the job or the profession of the person who works there. So florist is floristka, okay? So the name of the shop is florist. Chemist is farmaceuta, so the place uh, where he or she works is called chemist. Butcher is a rzeźnik, so this is a person who um, uh, processes meat and turns it into meat products. Yes. So uh, also here we had greengrocers. Uh, this is a little bit funny in Polish because uh, that would mean a profession of a person who sells fruit and vegetables. In Polish we don't really have this name. Pan z warzywniaka, pani z warzywniaka, tak? Jedynie tak można powiedzieć. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so, when you go into a store, uh, of course, there are different places and sections and parts of the store, especially in supermarket and things that you use to do shopping. So let's take a look at some of the basic things that we use to do shopping. Uh, the first one, pretty obvious, is a basket. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> when you do shopping and you know the shopping is going to be a small one, uh, you just take a basket, really koszyk. But if you are planning on bigger shopping and you know that you're going to buy a lot more products, then you take the trolley. The trolley is this big basket with four little wheels that you push in front of you and you can uh, put a lot of uh, products into it. The next one, <clears throat> the next word is uh, alley. Alley is a place in the shop. As in supermarkets or in hypermarkets, uh, the shop is organized into, let's say, some little streets between the shelves. You have the rows of shelves, czyli rzędy półek, and between them you have this little <clears throat> path, or let's call it a street, <clears throat> that we call an alley. Alley, no to jest właściwie alejka, po polsku się mówi taka uh, w sklepie. Tak? Uh, so this is also very important thing. Uh, big shops, hypermarkets, supermarkets are divided into sections in which you can buy products of the same category. So you have, uh, I don't know, dairy uh, products section, you have uh, meat section, you have uh, sweets section, you have sports sections, you have DIY sections, and so on and so on. Now, uh, when you do shopping, of course, you want to buy things at a uh, cheaper price, lower price. Sorry. So, sometimes you find a special offer. A special offer to jest po polsku promocja, specjalna oferta. So you could say it's a promotion. So we all love special offers. 
uh, you know, modern shops, they uh, offer, um, they have special offers almost all the time. Whether they are truly special offers, well, that's uh, debatable. Okay, the next thing is um, we have three words or expressions which basically mean uh, the same or similar things. A discount. Discount is basically when uh, a thing, a product has a lower price than it normally does, czyli zniżka. Uh, stąd się wzięła Polska, polskie, wzięło się polskie słowo dyskont, uh, jeżeli chodzi o taki sklep który oferuje dużo zniżek. Reduced price is basically the same as discount, uh, czyli zniżka, obniżona cena, so you can buy something at a reduced price. Very often in English we say that a product was reduced. Okay, so these shoes uh, were reduced, or this shirt was reduced, or these apples were reduced. Also, when you say that a product is reduced, you can say that it's, for example, 10, 20, 30 percent off, which means the price is reduced by 30%. Yeah, so these shoes were 30% off. These oranges are 20% off, uh, or half price. Yes. Uh, the next word is a bargain. Well, when you buy something at a special offer and it was discounted or reduced or it was, I don't know, 50% off, we say that it was a bargain or a good deal. Okazja. Dobry interes okazja. Bargain means okazja, but only uh, in the context of shopping, when you buy stuff. So bargain means that you bought something uh, much cheaper than you normally would. And as I said, we can call it a good deal, czyli świetny interes, świetna okazja. All right, now, um, when you do shopping, of course, shopping is not one single action. There are a lot of things, a lot of actions that you can do while shopping or even after the shopping. So, um, the, when you finish your shopping, you go to a place which is called checkout. Checkout is a place where you pay for your shopping. Uh, it has uh, different names in English. It can be called a checkout, casa. It can be called cash desk, też casa. You know, this is this place very often in uh, clothes shops and clothes stores where there is actually a desk and uh, there is a cash register on it and you pay there. It can be called cash register, casa. It can be called a till. They all mean the same thing, casa. Um, how can you pay? Well, nowadays you can pay in cash or, which is more popular, by card or in coupons. In Poland it is possible, it's not very uh, it's not very common, but you can do it. There are some coupons that you can exchange for, uh, uh, for products. In America it's much much more uh, common. When you pay for your um, for your um, shopping, for your products, you get a piece of paper with information, how much you paid for the shopping, what you bought. This is called a receipt, czyli paragon. Receipt, or you should always take a receipt um, to know uh, what you bought. Now, when you do your shopping and you go home and you check out the goods that you have bought and you don't like something about them, so for example, they are not fresh or they are not good quality, or they have some kind of problem, a fault, usterka. You can go back to the shop and you can complain about the product. Complain about dosłownie narzekać, poskarżyć się. In this context it means złożyć reklamację. So you can complain about something or you can make a complaint, czyli dosłownie złożyć reklamację. Um, of course, if you don't like this product and you want to make a complaint, you usually have to go back to the shop and you have to return the product to the shop. Czyli oddać, zwrócić jakiś produkt. Uh, in English you can say that you return something to the shop or you take something back. Czyli właśnie tak jak powiedziałem, odnieść, zwrócić, oddać coś do, do sklepu. Um, 
when you return a product to the shop you may still want to buy such product but a good one yes not this one because it's broken or there is something wrong with it but a good one so you go back to the shop and you exchange the product czyli wymieniamy go na inny taki sam ale inną sztukę być może sometimes you are so dissatisfied so unhappy with the product uh, or with the service that the shop gives you that you don't want to exchange it you just want to get a refund to get your money back czyli dostać zwrot pieniędzy otrzymać zwrot pieniędzy get a refund uh, or get your money back all right what are some other actions that you may do when you uh, go shopping which are connected with shopping of course go shopping iść na zakupy that's obvious uh, when you go shopping <clears throat> very often you don't go just to one shop but you go to many shops to check what products they have what prices they have in English we say that you shop around czyli robisz zakupy w różnych sklepach chodzisz po sklepach Yes, you shop around. Why do we shop around? Well, as I said, to check out the offer, the products which they have, um, but also to compare prices. <clears throat> compare prices to check the prices in one shop, then in another, then in another one. Czyli porównać ceny. Also, in some places, in some shops or in the uh, street markets, you can bargain or haggle. What does it mean? Well, it means that the price is not fixed. It means that you just uh, negotiate the price. So the seller wants so much, you offer to pay so much, and then you start your negotiations about the price. In English, we say that you bargain or haggle, czyli targować się. Um, also, some people go window shopping or they do window shopping. What does it mean? It means that you just go around different shops, you look at things, but you don't really buy anything. Either because you don't have money or you're not planning to buy anything or you just don't see anything uh, good to buy. Yes? Uh, next one is finding bargains finding bargains czyli szukanie okazji we uh, talked about the word bargain yes so finding bargains szukanie okazji znajdowanie okazji and of course uh, you always want to find a bargain which means you want to get a good deal on something czyli dostać dobrą cenę jak zrobić dobry interes z czymś z jakąś rzeczą so i got a very good deal uh, on these apples yes all right so i believe that is uh, everything uh, i mean the general things that you need to know about uh, shopping uh, of course there are plenty of other things we could talk about plenty of other details but i think i think we have discussed the most important things so next time you go shopping in an english-speaking country or any other foreign country i think uh, it'll be easier for you okay so thank you very much i hope this was a valuable and useful lesson for all of you thank you very much and goodbye a my prosimy naszych widzów, żeby nie regulowali odbiorników komputerów i innych odtwarzaczy naszych treści. To była bowiem lekcja języka angielskiego. Pan profesor Maciej Doksa ją poprowadził o samych przyjemnych rzeczach, czyli o zakupach. Co prawda wkradły się tam takie niuanse nieprzyjemne, bo zakupy to też wydawanie pieniędzy, ale... Zasłona milczenia. Panie Macieju, dziękujemy serdecznie. Za chwilę widzimy się ponownie. To była oczywiście lekcja języka angielskiego dla uczniów klasy pierwszych liceów ogólnokształcących po gimnazjum. Do zobaczenia. Do widzenia.